and on events and making presentations, but actually, usually, I'm behind the computer screen writing out words for our website and thinking how to promote Future Earth. So this is the first time that I'm presenting on behalf of Future Earth, and maybe this is the largest audience of my entire life. Um, I joined Future Earth last October as a communications officer, and I personally really feel that the vision of Future Earth is really important and in this turning point that we are facing as humanity, as Professor Cho and Dr. Weiss uh, brilliantly used data and, uh, and their experience to demonstrate. So today I will mainly talk about uh, some of the exciting initiatives that we as Future Earth are doing, um, so mainly on the communication side projects that I have been involved in, and developments in the Asia region. So I don't know how, if you've seen this before, but what are planetary boundaries? Where are we now as a human species? As you may all know, we are reaching planetary boundaries. The Earth is being overcrowded, and we are close to overstretching the Earth's resources. As you can see here, our friends at the Stockholm Research Center Institute did this research and found that we are reaching boundaries on biochemical flows, biosphere integrity, and almost reaching the boundary for climate change. Actually, I was born in 1988, the year the planet of the year was on time, as Professor Cho talked about earlier. So since I was young, I was I already heard so many stories about environmental destruction, and I learned about how the rainforests were being cut down at an alarming rate. So for me, sustainability was always something that really mattered from when I could remember. And I knew that we have to do something about this because our survival as a human species depends on this. So here we're facing some wicked problems. What are wicked problems? They are very complex and interrelated issues that are getting more and more involved with each other that we cannot rely only on a, a simplistic or single, single sector solution. We need to look at these problems for the whole Earth thinking and a holistic view of how society's different parts interact. We also need a more practical application of research into how society's problems uh, affect various people. We need to overcome the language barrier. There is a huge gap between the perspective between natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities. And they cannot have a good dialogue because they use such specialized jargon. So we need to solve some of humanity's most pressing issues. And we need research, but with a more holistic and practical viewpoint. So why, why did I join Future Earth? Why do we need an organization like Future Earth? And why do I remain hopeful? Well, the first pillar, as you can see here, is the Anthropocene. Have you heard of the Anthropocene? Actually, now researchers are calling this era, this new geological era, as uh, Anthropocene. Anthro means human, and Ocene is the geological era. So the, the period we're living in now is being so influenced by us humans in the atmospheric, hydrologic, and biospheric systems that it's a new era for, for Earth. The pace of change occurring across the globe is accelerating. Future Earth works to understand humanity's place in this rapidly changing world and how societies can transform how people interact with the planet. The second pillar for Future Earth is the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm sure you all are, are very familiar with it by now. So because of this 2030 agenda for sustainable development, the world has committed to undertake one of the most important social and environmental transformations in human history. We work in Future Earth to develop the knowledge and tools that nations across the globe need to meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We also work to achieve the ambitions of other agreements such as the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, the IT Biodiversity Targets, and Sendai Framework on Disaster Risk and Reduction. So how do we work in Future Earth? Here's a map showing the global networks of Future Earth. We work in a very global and decentralized manner. We have five different hubs across uh, five cities, Tokyo, Stockholm, Paris, Montreal, and Colorado. I work at the Tokyo hub. But we all work together as one team, dynamically and collaboratively. We try to uh, match our work style in an innovative way that meets, meets the needs of the 21st century. As you can see on the map here, regionally, we have regional centers and offices 
these countries with the yellow dots um, have offices in, in their main cities, which bring together a loose coalition to gather around regional issues. And also nationally, many countries have established national networks to take initiatives at a national level and make concrete connections to policy and business within each country. And later I'll uh, introduce some of our colleagues from other countries, such as China and Korea. So how do we work? We at Future Earth believe that research, innovation, and collaboration can transform the world towards sustainability. We harness the experience and reach of thousands of scientists and innovators from across the globe. Together, this global community facilitates research, mobilizes networks, sparks innovation, and tries to turn knowledge into action. And I think this is the most important thing, how to turn all this knowledge we have gathered into action towards sustainability solutions. Our organization is founded on 20 global research projects. They have very long histories, some cases decades, of generating research at the forefront of sustainability science. They played a critical role in forming the field of earth system science, including the concept of Anthropocene. Future Earth builds on this legacy to accelerate transformations to sustainability through research and innovation. We are a major international convener that fosters, fosters a culture of engaged research based on co-design and co-production of knowledge and tools. What I mean by co-design and co-production is that it's not a top-down approach just based on researchers and academia. We work together with stakeholders in policy, business, NGOs, it's that, and the public to uh, design the research from the beginnings. So here are some examples of what we do. We facilitate research. Actually, Professor Ray Weiss is one of the team members of this Global Carbon Project, which releases a um, carbon picture every year. So they have been using research expertise to develop a complete picture of the global carbon cycle, um, including both its biophysical and human dimensions. And recently, they have been sharing their findings at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, such as last year in Bonn, Germany, in November. Um, this year, they last year, they found that the carbon emissions actually rose two percent after a stable three years. You can find the YouTube, uh, the video that we made about this carbon budget on YouTube if you look up global carbon budget. We convene and mobilize networks. So we have a broad range and diversity of expertise in our large community of researchers and practitioners associated with Future Earth. We bring people together based on different topics and themes. Greater interactions among the disciplines and between research both in both the public and private sectors can improve the role of research to identify actual solutions to societal challenges. Here's one example, Knowledge Action Networks. This is a Future Earth original initiative which fosters collaboration across disciplines on some of the most important global environmental challenges. The aim is to generate multifaceted knowledges need to inform solutions for complex social issues. These are voluntary networks which uh, anyone who's a stakeholder working on an issue can join. For example, for uh, last November in Tokyo, we held a working workshop for emerging risks and disasters. We brought together diverse stakeholders from academia, NGOs, policy-based think tanks, international organizations, and not only from the natural sciences, but of course, the social sciences and other sectors such as health. We turn knowledge into action and we spark and promote innovation. Here's one example. Last year, we had a, the seventh international conference on sustainability science in Stockholm. It was organized by the Tokyo and Stockholm hubs of Future Earth, along with our partners. And this um, conference focused on new knowledge generation and integration to support the implementation of the sustainable development goals and how this knowledge is implemented by society. We started a really exciting initiative called SDG Labs. This is, uh, we opened a call for funding to encourage experimental prototype solutions for SDG-related issues. We encourage innovative ways to overcome lock-ins and plant seeds of change that can fundamentally change the systems that created the problem in the first place, not a band-aid to the problems. 
So they included projects, for example, to build capacity of youth in Nigeria by staging a hackathon to, of designing ways to restore green spaces to the city. Or another one which was an effort to integrate indigenous knowledge to improve health in the islands of Fiji. Now I'd like to introduce some of our communications related pro products that I think are really great and I really encourage you to join as well. This is an uh, open network, which is kind of a Facebook for uh, researchers and sustainability science. So it's a social media and information network. Anyone can join as long as you're interested, and it's very bottom-up and grassroots. You can look for topic-based communities that you're interested in. If you have a project, you can look for collaborators, researchers, maybe even funders. You can find and post events, opportunities, jobs, etc. If you're interested, please take a look. This is our award-winning magazine. Um, it's digital and print magazine called Anthropocene. And it explores how do we build a sustainable human age we actually want to live in. This one is solution-focused. We have many wicked problems. But Anthropocene looks more at the innovative and often counterintuitive solutions to our environmental issues. They also have daily science, which is a daily coverage of really interesting new research, which they take from academia and make it very understandable. Interactive digital features and high-end print editions. If you become a supporting member, you can get print issues delivered to your door. Another really exciting thing we do with Future Earth is the Media Lab, which is based in Stockholm Brazilian Center. This is using new technologies and media in an experimental way in order to immerse people in the challenges of global sustainability and deepen their personal sense of involvement. For example, this picture shows a virtual reality experience um, and this person is experiencing life in a favela, which is like a slum of Brazil. It makes the person literally see life through the eyes of another person. And maybe this will be the, the starting point of them to become interested in poverty or SDG-related issues. Now I'd just like to briefly talk about some of the projects that I have been working on since I joined Future Earth um, since last October. So we have a monthly newsletter, which is also open to anybody who's interested um, in getting information about Future Earth. And it has about currently 8,000 subscribers all over the world, from America to Japan. And I curate the information towards the Future Earth community. Um, some of the things, this is a picture of the latest one, which was in February. And some of the things that topics that we have here are future Earth updates, so news and big announcements of future Earth, including the updates on global research projects and the knowledge action networks, um, global happenings, which are the big sustainability related news and interesting research, including from Anthropocene magazine, events and opportunities, um, which are mostly taken from the open network, and this month's quote, which I'm sure for next month may be coming from this Pyeongchang forum. And I'll make sure to have a big feature on this event in the next newsletter, so yeah. And another one I 